bags than you swabs. Unfortunately, we don't have any depth. It's beautiful. As you can see, the lines are simply stunning. Tom, Up. what's happening today then? Yeah, it's very good. What day is it? It is Thursday. Thursday. It's Thursday and we are off on a week's adventure with Pirate Jam. an event organized by our friend American McGee where we get a whole bunch of computer programmers and they come on board and we have a bit of fun with them and they have a week to put together a game. We had lots of last minute preparations to do in the marina before we left this morning. We're heading off a couple of days early just to scout out a couple of locations. Unfortunately, we don't have any depth. I don't know why, can't work it out, but we have absolutely no depth sounding whatsoever. Fortunately we are going to be basing ourselves in places that we are very familiar with. We have all of our tracks, our waypoints, our anchor spots so it's fairly safe. Plus we have American just ahead of us who can warn us of any shallow bits of water but uh, yeah it's a bit frustrating so that's what I'm going to be working on today. We had quite a lot of work to do before we came out of the marina this morning because we were delayed somewhat because Millie got bitten one night. She didn't come back in the morning. We couldn't find her. Eventually we did find her. She was in a lot of pain with uh, one of her front legs and one of her back legs. She couldn't really walk. So we nursed her for a bit and then, then we took her to the vet and she wouldn't let you touch her because she was in so much pain and she was thrashing and biting but she, he did manage to shave her back leg and found two puncture marks so we think it's a bite of course that means potentially rabies so um, the two shots that she had he reckons were out of date so she's now on an emergency post precautionary uh, series of rabies shots she's had loads of antibiotics and painkillers and she's so much better but while all that was going on she bit Jamie on the hand at the vets and he said have you got rabies shots and we said no so we had to go straight to hospital Jamie's now on a series of five rabies shots to um, their post rabies shots to deal with any infection that he may have we don't think he has it but we have to do it so all of that meant we got delayed in preparing the boat and it was all of a bit of a rush this morning. But we're here, we're on our way. Well, as the jammers stay on shore and work on their games, Phil, our friend Phil, who happens to be skippering a gaff rig schooner on this trip, looking after some of her boys, has decided to take us for a little sunset cruise. She is a 1929 Gaftrick schooner. You can tell her schooner because the aft mast is taller than the uh, thing. She's been sunk twice. She is very solid and an extremely good sea boat. We're motoring at the moment. Can you tell us about the engine? Do you know anything about the engine? Uh, big one. Um, yeah, I think we will eventually replace the motor. Um, it's a, a diesel, about a six cylinder. Drives us along round about 6.5 knots at a, at a good cruising speed. It's very economical on fuel and at a push we can probably get eight knots out of the old girl. We haven't sailed her under the gaff rig, uh, mainly because I think we are still looking at the uh, standing rigging, but she's a delightful old girl. Uh, she's the lady of the sea. A great type of boat for what we've got here. Absolutely. So the lady of the sea being skippered by the gentleman of the sea. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, it probably had hammocks slung in it. I've slept in hammocks. <laughs> Liz and I have been chortling along doing pirate jam and my old mucker Matt gets in touch to say that uh, he's coming to Thailand and he said, are you guys in Krabi? We're going via Krabi. I said, no, unfortunately we are heading down the coast to Lantern. He goes, well, 
funny enough that's where I happen to be going. So lo and behold I've hooked up with one of my oldest school friends with his family. It's a surprise birthday treat for his mother-in-law who's 65 and um, yeah so we've ended up hanging out together for a night or two which has been great. Cheers! <laughs> I just thought we'd show you some of the activities that these guys get up to and we've got a relay race today. All the games every day are normally beach based and they're pirate themed. So in among all the game developments that they're doing throughout the day, we have a break in the afternoon, a bit of team building, a bit of fun and uh, just soak up this uh, beautiful beach atmosphere here at Koh Lanta. All right you scallywags and you swabs. There's not going to be any creative interpretation of rules today. I have been brought in to watch each and every one of you to make sure that you follow precisely what you have to do today. Firstly, get behind that line, boy. Get behind that line. Every day we cycle up to Ton to see how he's getting on with our um, Dodger roof and every day we go past this boat. It's beautiful as you can see the lines are simply stunning, it's a wooden boat, there's not very much to it. I've had a look upstairs, you can see inside, it needs, a bit of, it needs quite a bit of work but obviously someone is working on it. So if anybody recognises this boat or has an idea what they think it may be, do let us know in the comments. Very narrow, very, very narrow, sloop, um, wooden, a lovely big tiller at the back and I reckon when she's fully fired up she must really shoot through the water. Tom, Up. what's happening today then? Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the long part of the process. We've got the shape. Um, Tom's now got the rounded edges that we wanted here on the corners and over the lip. No sharp points anywhere. But this part takes a long time, which is just sanding it and sanding it to make it as smooth. Um, as we possibly can, ready for the painters. But I think it's going to be a few days before it's going to get to that stage. But he's just working quietly away over here in the corner on his own. And each time we come over, it's a bit more sanded off. Still a little bit concerned that it does seem quite chunky. Um, but it looks good. <laughs> Thank you. 
so it's now is the time to start thinking about heating Esper because of our passage to the Pacific Northwest. We have been tossing ideas around for weeks if not months about what to do and we have finally made a decision that we are going to go for a diesel heater. So that's that, at least we've made that decision. So the next decision is where we're going to put it and there really is only one place on the boat and that's here. Diesel heaters, they need to be facing fore or aft because they don't do well on the side. They don't really want to do too much rocking. Chances are we won't have it on during our sailing anyway, but obviously when we're at anchor and so forth, we need good heating. We're gonna go for a Dickinson. We're not sure which one, the Lofoten or the Antarctic. So at the moment, we are writing to them, explaining what we're planning to do and asking for their advice. Now, at the moment, this little area here is dedicated to our freezer which lives in here and we've made the decision that we're going to have to do without the freezer to be honest we don't really use it as a freezer anyway we just use it as a second fridge so that's got to come out and we'll just have our main fridge so under here underneath this cushion is where the freezer sits in here initially we thought we were going to have to remove this entire section the whole lot obviously this comes off as well, um, put a hearth in and stand it there. But Jamie had a brainwave overnight and what we would like to do is keep this, keep this beautiful wood here that was put in originally by Oyster uh, and it just has lovely lines and what we would like to be able to do is to settle the heater inside here. Probably gonna have to take the top panel out and build um, a little platform for it to sit on. But, so my task today is to send photographs of this whole setup with measurements, find out from Dickinson what sort of height it would be and which of those two is the right one for us. It's very exciting. Few lots to talk about there, eh? We covered two weeks worth you got in this episode. Loads and loads of things going on. We'll talk about Millie and the rabies thing in a moment. But first of all, we wanted to give a big shout out to Russell Perks who provided some of the extra footage you saw during the Pirate Jam scene. Russell was the official cinematographer this year, so if you want to see more of Russell's work, go and check out American McGee's YouTube channel, and we'll put a link below to uh, Russell's website. So, thanks Russ. So now, the Millie story. You're all going to want to know what's going on with our little pretty cat. And yes, it was pretty horrendous, wasn't it? Yeah, she didn't come back one morning, and we used the little locating beacony thing so she wears a little disc on her collar and we have a remote control and it allows us to find her around the marina and even sometimes on the boat yeah she'll get lost somewhere and we can always find her so <laughs> it's been brilliant anyway this morning she didn't turn up so off we went with our little search beacon located her on top of a bimini of another boat and there was no way she was going to get off i tried to get her but she was in pain and she was screaming and it was very very disconcerting it was it? well it's distressing for us yeah. and distressing for millie as well something was wrong and of course the frustration with animals is they can't tell no. you what's wrong with them so we ended up taking her down to the vet yeah apparently in this area rabies is a really big mm. problem mm. Uh, and he's recommending that all animals get their shots every year now hers he rain he maintained around a date so to be on the safe side, she had the first of a big course of rabies injections. And of course for her, it was distressing as well. And that's when she bit me because I was trying to hold her down mm. and bless her, it's not her fault. She was clearly in a lot of distress and pain and she sunk her teeth into my hand. And that's when, as we said in the video, the vet turned around and said, have you got rabies shots? To which we said no. And he said, you need to get down the hospital pronto. Now, we haven't, we don't really know much about rabies shots and what we heard was that they're great big syringes yes. this long that go into the gut. That's exactly so, what we thought straight away. Oh and I lost my all the God. blood from my face and went pale. It's oh no, you're kidding me. I've got to go through this horrendous course of rabies shots. As it turns out, they have um, obviously improved uh, the rabies inoculation and uh, it's, you can't even feel it, it's just a normal injection in the arm, but it's a series of five and uh, there's no real side effects, although I have to say during Pirate Jam, I felt a little bit out of sorts. I was sort of quite tired a lot, but uh, there was nothing really bad about it. So um, I had those shots and Liz, you also took a course. Yeah, I decided well. I would take the preventative shots, which is only three, so I did that as well. Anyway, Millie had her shots. She had big painkillers and antibiotics and the anti first anti-rabies shot. And the next day, she had improved no end. 
So that was great, but she still had to go through the whole process. So when we went to Pyrojam, we took the rabies shots ourselves because they had to be done at certain times and we injected her. So that was all good and you got your shots done at the local hospital. So happy to report that Millie is now very well back to her normal self and she is rabies free and if she gets bitten again, we're okay, we're covered. So we mentioned in this episode that we've got a problem with the depth sounder and what are we going to do about it? Get a new one. Yeah. Sadly, it's only four years old. If you're not sure whether your depth sounder is working normally, if you put your ear to the top of the depth sounder inside the boat, you can hear a ticking sound. Mm. Tick, 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 tick. And if you can hear that, you know that the uh, depths of the sonar is actually working and we couldn't hear that at all. Tried um, taking the cables apart, making sure there was no corrosion in the cables, that was all fine. So clearly the unit has just packed up. So unfortunately, we've got to replace it. The trouble is, what do we replace it with? Do we simply replace it with the exact same model or do we look for something that maybe is better? This has been a difficult one. It has, and um, they don't actually make that model anymore. It has been superseded by another model. Should note that Airmar, uh, who is the manufacturer of our sonar, uh, make about 90% of the sonars on the market. They are the world's biggest manufacturer of depth sounders. So I tried to do some research to see if there was a problem with that particular unit. Uh, had advice from lots of people saying normally they're very good. So I think we just got a bad, yeah. um, bad unit. So yeah. still it's an expensive replacement, but uh, whilst we're on the hard, uh, we've, we may as well do it now. Before we go on, just want to say this is one of the problems of trying to record in the boatyard. There are always engines and bits of machinery going on. So hopefully you can hear us, otherwise they're, we're never going to get this done. They're watering the plants <laughs> and they have this huge water tank run by a, a generator. That's the noise you can hear, so sorry about that. At this point, I just want to say something about Phil Marshall. He was skippering the gaff rigged schooner that you saw earlier and it may have come across that he didn't really know much about it. That's because he came in at the 11th hour to skipper a boat he'd never been on before. Yeah, so well done Phil. I thought I think Phil did really well and uh, he was a great host. I know yeah. the pirate jammers loved having him and uh, it was really good of him to take us out for that little sunset cruise for Matt and Candice, uh, my, my friends from back home. So uh, thanks Phil. Yeah, well done did Phil. Did a great job. So just a very, very quick word on that wooden boat that I showed you earlier. I discovered later that it's actually for sale and it's for sale at the brokerage here at Crabby Boat Lagoon and it's on the market as is for 50,000 US dollars, so if you fancy a project and you've got a lot of money. As you saw at the end of the clip there, we finished off with the beginnings of our plans for the heating system. Fortunately, it seems as if we do not have to cut up Esper's yeah. interior. Dickinson came back and said it's probably going to be okay slightly elevated off the floor where you saw that freezer unit so we're really pleased about that we are it's going to make our life so much easier it's going to look great i think it's got really cozy and millie can sit at the front of it and on a um, little oh. on a little woolen rug yeah. yes <laughs> okay well i hope you enjoyed that action-packed episode thanks for watching please do share like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already and don't forget to comment because we may well do more q and a's and absolutely sure there's going to be a lot of comments and questions about this episode because there's so much going on. All right, in the meantime, peace and fair winds. F that up, didn't I? And you know, being just uh, dis oh, sake, start again. Start again. Go yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, no, it's coming down. It's that thing again. At this point, just want to say something about Phil Marshall, who was skip. Oh. Phil is the skipper of that beautiful old gaff rig kedge you saw. Uh, yeah. No, schooner. He's the skipper of that gaff rig. Oh, no, stop. What? Sorry. It's going to go on for ages. Do you think this is going to... Oh, God, we're so close. <laughs>